Hello, it is Mac here, and today I'm going to talk about the new adversary mode that was added in the G Tone line in the Finance and Felony DLC, and that is called Trade in Places. And I'm going to be sort of doing a review of this adversary mode because I don't think that many people have actually seen this game mode or have played it themselves. And it was a new adversary mode that was added in the update on Tuesday, which added in the Finance and Felony DLC. And I don't feel like people actually really uh, have given this uh, game mode a shot because, you know, of all the other stuff that has been added into the game. So the best way to describe this game mode is imagine a deathmatch, but without the teams being uh, the same throughout the entire round. So what I mean by that is there's sort of two teams in this adversary mode. There's the winners and there's the losers, and that's actually what they call them. And sort of the objective is to become a winner and to uh, sort of get on the enemy team and not be a loser. It's a little confusing, but if you are a loser, your objective is to kill an enemy on the enemy team who would be a winner, and your objective is to kill him or her, and then you will become on their team. So uh, they'll switch to a loser and you'll switch to a winner. Now your objective as a winner is to not die and to kill all the other losers to get up your score. Now there are two sort of winning conditions that you can have. One is where there's this bar for each winner. So each winner has like this sort of bar and then uh, as that fills up then uh, that will be whoever uh, is in the top on that will win. And also if you died sort of closer towards the end you can actually still win even if you're on the loser team if you died you know closer towards the end because your bar will still start to slowly decrease However, if it's still in like first place, you're still gonna win. And I, I kind of like that. The other one is just whoever's on the winning team at the end wins. And I hate that because it's kind of like, it sort of devolves at, you know, the end 30 seconds or something. It sort of just devolves into a camp fest for all the winners. And because if they don't die, they're gonna win. You know, the winners aren't gonna poke their heads out. They're gonna just gonna stay in cover, make sure that nobody gets to them. And because they're gonna win that way. However, it can be a little bit more intense at the last 30 seconds because if you are doing the one where there's like this bar and you want to win, but there's somebody who's ahead of you, you could actually pretty much go in there and try and get more kills. But if you die, then, you know, your bar will start to decrease. So, and as for the actual game mode itself, it's actually not too bad. However, I was kind of hoping for a little bit more than I actually got. And maybe it was just because my first impressions was a 1v1. The first time I played this death match, it was a 1v1. And it was just because like I wanted to know like the the gist of how this game mode was going to be played out. And I just got into a 1v1 job. And that's what I did. So I played throughout that. And I was like, oh, so there's only going to be one winner. I thought I thought that there was only going to be ever be one winner. And that's like whoever who everybody's going after. However, whenever I played it again with like six people, that's not the case. There's actually the same amount of winners as there is losers. And I thought, why? You know, why can't there be a sort of system where it's only one winner? Maybe two, depending on, you know, if the player size, which is uh, 10, 10 players max. But, you know, let's say if you go over five, maybe... Maybe only 1 versus 10 could maybe be a little bit of a uh, too much, but maybe even 2. But why does it always have to be even? Because really, if you are the winners, most likely you're going to be doing pretty good. You know, you're not going to be a bad winner, right? Because you already have to get some kills. So really, if you just want to camp in one spot, the enemies are going to be the same amount of players as you, so they can't really like overpower you. Which I guess is kind of nice, but then it also means that, well, they aren't really going to switch teams. So the losers are probably just going to keep dying, whereas the winners, they aren't really going to have much of a challenge. And I feel like what they should do is make it so that there's only like one or two, uh, you know, uh, winners at all times. So the people that are defending, they are only going to be one or two people, depending on the player count. And I feel like that would be so much more entertaining because whoever kills the winner, then they will become the winner and they're going to have to defend against everybody else. 
So you'd actually want to be close to the winner. So let's say the winner is like on top of a rooftop or something and you have to climb up there. You'd actually want to be on that rooftop instead of being on the ground because if you're on the ground, you're not going to survive long because all of your friends are around you. All of your teammates that were teammates a few seconds ago, they're now going to turn on you. And I feel like that would be a lot of fun. But then, you know, it'd also be like, well, what if I do win? What if I do kill all these guys? Will I be able to, you know, sort of get a lot of kills here? You know, I can't just camp in one spot because I'm still going to need kills because I have to get more kills than everybody else. So I feel like that would be entertaining. Also, could you imagine, def you know, your one self defending against like 10 people? It'd sort of be a little bit like if any of you guys have ever played like Infection from like Call of Duty or Halo or what have you, where you're the last one alive, everybody else is coming after you, they maybe have different weapons than you, so you can just camp in that one corner and you're, you know, getting pushed back into a corner, and they're getting closer each and every second, and, you know, you're having to reload super fast, and it's just super intense. I feel like that's how this game mode would be, and you can already kind of get a little bit of that in, say, Siege Mentality, where, you know, you're the final guy alive, and you're trying to just defend, and I feel like this would make this game mode so much more intense, because it's not going to be, you know, 3v3, it's not going to be 4v4, it's not going to be 5v5, it's going to be 1, maybe 2v8, something like that. I feel like that would be pretty cool, and it would just make it a lot more intense. And you'd also kind of be competing against your teammates, and if you are on the losing team, you know, where, where you have like 8 teammates, then you would actually kind of want to be going up against them. You know, sure, you, you know, your main goal is to kill the person who is defending. However, you'd want to get that kill, and you'd want to be the person that actually gets that kill. And whoever does get that kill will become the winner. Now, as for the other parts of the game mode, it's actually not that bad. The one map that I have played, and I've only played the, uh, you know, the Trade in Places 1 map, it's actually a very good map in my opinion. I remember I made a map here after Custom Classics came out for, the, you know, Double Barrel Shotgun only. And I feel like that was a very fun deathmatch that I created. And I do really like the area for uh, Trading Places 1. The other ones, I haven't played. So I can't tell you how good those are. Just because not many people are actually playing this game mode right now. And uh, that is one of the problems with this adversary mode. Not many people are actually playing it. So, uh, yeah, that's another thing that I feel like... It is probably why not many people have been uploading this game mode or have been talking about it because just not many people have been playing it. And also, uh, as for the weapons and stuff, they were actually pretty good as well. I didn't find too many overpowered weapons. Sure, something like an assault shotgun eh, maybe is too much. I'd also maybe like to see like a grenade or even something like Molotovs or tear gas or something like that just to flush out the campers. Um, because that is something that does happen quite a bit, especially whenever you have the one, uh, you know, winning, uh, sort of specifications where whoever's on the winning side, whenever the timer ends, is automatically going to win. People are just going to camp because they don't really need kills, they just need to survive. So, I feel like something to kind of flush out the campers, uh, that would be kind of nice. But other than that, the game was actually not that bad. Um, it could be a little bit better, I will admit. Um, and I don't know if I'd necessarily call it my favorite adversary mode in the game, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily too bad. Um, it can be a little bit of fun. It is kind of chaotic, which is kind of nice. The, one of my main problems with it that I've had, though, is that not many people are playing it, and most of the time I actually did play this, there were some weird, you know, options that people were creating. You know, most of the hosts that I was going up against were, like, level, lower than level fives, mostly. And they would put on, like, Night and Rain in. They'd put on First Person Only for, like, four rounds, which some of the, spe like, options that some of the hosts were creating were just very, very awkward. And that's one of the things that kind of annoyed me. Also, for some reason, there were so many low levels I was finding that were hosting this. I don't know if they have just picked it up because of the new DLC, and they're like, oh, you know, I'm gonna go play this. Or, you know, if they're second accounts, I'm not sure, but, like, it just... I don't know why I was finding so many level 5s or less as hosts, but other than that, the game mode is pretty fun. I would admit, uh, try and play this game mode with more than, like, a 1v1 or a 2v2 or something like that. It can be pretty entertaining with quite a number of players. The problem is actually finding the players for this adversary mode. Who knows, maybe more people will start playing it after the, uh, sort of, uh, freshness of this DLC... 
kind of wears off of like the CEO system and stuff like that. But who knows what will happen there. But anyways, let me your thoughts on this in the comments. Do you have you played this adversary mode? Do you like it? Do you not? Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments. Hope you enjoy. Feedback is appreciated. I'll see you guys in the next video.